Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Mr. Hydra, and this is Rust Console Edition. So, standing before you, in, uh, in front of you here, is arguably one of my favorite base designs that I've ever come up with, um, called the Dragon's Den. Um, it's got a whole bunch of features uh, of this base, uh, but its main selling point is that it takes an entire box of rockets to blow into it, um, and it only costs you uh, a box and a half of metal frags and a shitload of uh, gears in order to make this. Um, so it's super cheap, it's super simple. Uh, you can easily, if you just leave the base alone, just like this, um, it's 75 rockets no matter which way you raid into this thing. Um, and, uh, and it's only 12k metal frags uh, a day to upkeep this thing. So you can easily fit two days worth of upkeep into uh, this base, which is more than enough uh, for a small group. And if you guys are gone for more than two days out of your base, well, you deserve to have it fall apart and get raided. Um, this is rust after all, right? So, um, yeah, so this is the base. Uh, it doesn't really look like much, and it's not supposed to. Um, it does have four separate entrances into the base, um, and I'm going which uh, makes coming and going a lot easier. And all of these, um, in a future video, um, I will show you how I can connect all of these to my China gates, or my China walls, uh, that are also gatehouses, um, so that way I can get in and out. But until you do uh, such thing, you can easily just set up something like this uh, to allow yourself in and out of the base. So let's go take a tour. So starting from the front door here, you have uh, you come into your first main floor, and this is your utility floor. Uh, this is where you're going to put your workbenches on the, on the two sides of this, your tier uh, one and your tier two. Uh, you can also have some of your other uh, benches set up. So you can have, um, for instance, on this wall, you can have your um, uh, repair bench. And then on this wall, you can have a, uh, your research table. Um, and then, you know, you don't have to have anything over here. You have plenty of space for bags um, in here. Um, you have two of these uh, shooting galleries or viewing galleries. Um, because I'm running a hotel, I don't want a bunch of people shooting in or out of my hotel. Uh, this is my hotel design, by the way, um, just so you guys know. Uh, that's why it's called the Dragon's Den, because it's kind of cozy. Um, but you can easily put uh, turn these into windows with glass uh, windows in it and turn this into a shooting floor. Uh, just make sure that you use metal embrasures and that the walls are upgraded to steel um, to get the best results. So you have these, uh, you have two of these, one on either side. Um, what I like to do is I like to grow pumpkins, uh, especially pumpkins in these ones, um, the ones that everybody has access to. So I'm going to put a bunch of planter boxes in here. I'm going to put um, a fridge over here um, and some more planter boxes. And the reason why I grow pumpkins in here is because you can have a whole bunch of bags. So say you use um, these small planter boxes, right? So say you use these small box planter boxes. You know, you can have one here. You can have another one here uh, growing a couple of pumpkins. Uh, and then you can have a bunch of bags in here. So all of your bags can be in here, so you guys can spawn in here, grab a pumpkin from the pumpkin patch, immediately plant the seed, or grab all the pumpkins, uh, eat the pumpkins, immediately plant all the seeds, and then sit down in your chair. Um, it's not showing you right now, but when you sit in this chair, you're going to get 100% comfort. Um, so um, you're going to, by eating those three pumpkins sitting here, uh, you're going to heal up in like 30 seconds, um, and then you'll be full health and you'll be ready to go out and fight and do whatever you need to. So another good thing you can do here is you can put lockers here, or you can put lockers here with um, some uh, anti-raid uh, kits, uh, some DBs or something. So you can just spawn in on here if you really need to quickly, come over to your locker, grab your stuff, and by the time you're all set, uh, by the time you do all of that, uh, you're good to go. So that's basically what this room is for. Um, and then all of your workbenches. Up here you have access to your shooting floor. I don't really design shooting floors, um, so you guys will have to come up with your own design. Um, but this is the shooting floor. You can do whatever you guys want up here. 
if you want to double the raid cost, so you want to make it 150 rockets in order to raid this thing, um, as well as uh, making it two full boxes of rockets to raid, and then for sure only having one day's worth of upkeep in the TC, because I'm pretty sure we're already at the 30% um, total upkeep cost. So you can add two more of the, the first floor and the second floor. You can add two more of those floors right here where this is and just make this three taller. Um, so you get double the amount of storage and double the amount of rooms uh, for double the cost, but it's going to be six stories tall. And uh, that's for like the very large groups. And then you're guaranteed to fit at least a day's worth of upkeep in the TC. Um, but if you do anything more than this, so say this is your shooting floor, this is where you're ending. Uh, if you do anything more than this, I would highly recommend that, again, you upgrade everything into metal because it's going to be cheaper in the long run um, and for the overall costs. So I would do that in metal, but then you're going to be dropping yourself below the two days worth of upkeep that you can get. So you're, you'll be looking at a day, day and a half anyway. So it's up to you. Add two more floors um, and get 24 hours upkeep or add a shooting floor here and get about a day and a half worth of upkeep. Um, it's uh, completely up to you, but that's your shooting floor. So again, this is your, um, this is your utility floor. These stairs, um, they're not going to stay here very long. Eventually, you guys are going to find an elevator, put an elevator in here. Um, that's why these doors are on both sides. Um, so now we're going to go down into the rooms. Now, again, I had this kind of set up as my hotel, um, but for, as we go deeper into this thing, I'm going to show you different examples of uh, what you can do. So this is just a plain room. Again, it's the same shooting floor as above. Uh, you can build down here, uh, do the exact same thing, um, and uh, you're good to go in there. Um, same room. But over here, we have um, a door pass. So you have a bedroom right here. And then from the bedroom, you uh, go on, and then you have your full-size loot room. Now, uh, you can also make this into a uh, loot room if you want, and have these be dual, du uh, dual loot rooms, um, but you really don't have to. And because we have that floor above, um, we don't have to make this uh, wall here armored. Uh, we don't even actually have to make this wall here armored either, but um, because I run a hotel, I like to make sure that everybody knows that they're not being raided from the inside from the guy beside them. So, uh, But this one does not have to be armored. It only has to be um, sheet metal because all of these bunkers, they only have to provide um, 16 uh, rockets worth of protection in order to make this base work. So um, by having that one wall there, we're guaranteed that way. And then each one of these has uh, a double layer of metal. So this layer and a triangle on, on the outside of it. So each one of these are double layered. So every loot room is 16, uh, including all of these rooms. So every room in here is 16 rockets. And I'll show you um, how we add all of that up later to make it a 75 rocket raid. Uh, on the other side, um, this is more typical of what I like to do for my um, for my guests. So I have, again, my bedroom, your standard loot room, um, everything else like that. I have a couple furnaces along here for them, so they have furnaces, um, all that fun stuff. Uh, but I also include a vending machine. So um, because of where it is on the, on the path, um, it's, it actually adds strength um, to it. And if they see this vending machine, if somebody's coming in here to, to raid through, um, they're going to more likely want to go through the back side in order to get reach the back than they are going to want to go through this wall. And because we have three garage doors, it's three, six, nine rockets in order to get to the back of this thing. It's one extra rocket um, that they have to spend in order to get through here. And it's forcing them through the door path uh, versus going through this wall. And then not only that, but you can um, lower the health of this thing uh, to just below this wall or even uh, below this door right here. So if they do blow up this door, this vending machine will blow up and anything inside the vending machine that was in there, um, they're going to lose. So it's kind of like a suicide vending machine or a, a last stand vending machine, you know, if you really want to screw them in the end. 
uh, and again, that's uh, surrounded by at least three doors. So you got one here, one here, um, and then if you go through uh, the shooting floor one, that's another one. So that's three doors in order to get through here. So this is what I like to do for my second floors um, and every other floor. The only floor that doesn't have one of these shooting floors is going to be uh, the basement floor, and I want that a little bit more protected uh, because that's, again, where I'm going to keep most of my main stuff. So over here, I have uh, two different examples of how you can do a loot room. So you set up your standard loot room like you would up here up top. So you have your two boxes, your box in the middle, and then these two small boxes. Um, you can also, if you really wanted to, to be hyper efficient with these loot rooms, you can also, instead of this box, uh, you can put a barbecue and then that box underneath it. So you get even more storage with the barbecues. So you're going to copy this uh, onto both of these floors right here, adding the barbecues if you want. Um, but for this bottom floor here, you have to angle your boxes because you you're going to need a way to get through um, in order to get into here and access everything. So this is a way how you can make all of these loot rooms. So instead of having four loot rooms and four bedrooms, uh, you can have eight full um, loot rooms for the clans or uh, the bigger groups. Um, and that's what I do there. And then here, uh, it's, it's all blocked off because um, I don't want anybody coming through here. Um, th this one should, uh, uh, these should actually be swapped. This one should be high qual, and then this one should be sheet metal. Um, but uh, again, for my, uh, well, actually, no, this one should be high qual, and I'll tell you why here in a sec. But so this is how you can do a hyper efficient uh, loot room setups. And then last but not least over here uh, in this triangle, I have my uh, large battery and this one runs all of my uh, turrets. So I want it almost as deep into the base as possible um, and then past all of the turrets. So that's why it's here and it's protected. Uh, and this I kind of use as my utility room. This is where uh, a lot of my wiring is going to go on the outsides of these walls. So if anybody does break in, my wiring systems um, stop. So it makes uh, the base harder to get through. And then you also have your unlootable uh, TC right here. So um, it's unlootable for two reasons. They have to both blow up this floor um, or they have to blow up this wall because we have a metal frame on the inside. So this whole room right here is the equivalent of, uh, of going through an actual wall as if this TC was in here. The only thing is, is they can blow up the TC, but because we have our perimeter TCs that are going to cover, it won't make much difference, and they won't be able to loot what's in there without rocketing in. So if you want to keep your uncooked sulfur in there, uh, you can, but I wouldn't recommend it because you just want your uh, upkeep in there, and that's it. Um... So yeah, that's that's basically um, the tour of everything, um, and uh, now I'm going to explain to you why it costs so much in order to raid into this thing, um, and I'm also going to show you the easiest way to raid into this thing um, is also pretty much the exact same way as every as everything else. So the only thing I didn't show um, in my video uh, before was that for this first floor here, because you have one, uh, two, is you're going to want to make um, these squares right here. You're going to want to turn them to armored. Um, right here. These three, these three, you're going to want to turn to armored. Um, you can do these other ones if you want to, but at least those three. Um, and then you're going to do the same thing over here. You're going to turn these three into armored as well. Armored. All right. Um, now, actually, let's uh, quickly go over to the TC here, and we'll look at the upkeep costs. Um, so here's our upkeep costs. This is for 24 hours. Uh, you can ignore the wood because stuff, uh, and you can ignore that uh, stone because I forgot a piece of stone somewhere. But as you can see, it's less than 12,000 uh, metal frags, uh, and it's less than uh, 80 high qual. Um, for an entire day, 24 hours worth of, of upkeep. So you can pretty much fit 48 hours worth of upkeep into this thing right now. Now, in order to figure out the build cost for this, because um, Rust Console Edition doesn't show you the build cost because we get unlimited free stuff, and again, it's not showing us here in the upkeep. 
So if you ever need to try and figure out how much something costs to build, um, and this is including all of the doors and everything else that I have on here, um, one thing you can do is uh, most of the time, most of the builds you're looking at are, are the large builds, and they're going to charge you 30% of what the total cost uh, to build. They're going to charge you 30% to uh, maintain it uh, per day. So in order to do the math on that and to figure that out, what we're going to do is we're going to do a little bit of math. Um, so let me pull up my calculator here. So we have uh, 12,000 uh, metal uh, a day that we need to, um, to fill up our TC. So we're going to multiply that by 100. And then we're going to divide that by our 30%. Uh, percent. And that equals 40,000 metal frags. Um, now we're going to divide that by 1,000 because we can put them in stacks of 1,000. That equals 40 stacks. And we're going to divide that by 24 because that's how many um, stacks we can fit into uh, a large box. Um, and we equal to one and 1 um, 1 1.6, so just over a box and a half of metal uh, in order to build everything. So that's pretty freaking good if you guys ask me for how much protection it is. Now let's figure out the raid costs. So in order to go through any of these outer walls right here, um, it's going to be 16 rockets. And then in order to get through this garage door, it's going to be another three. So we're at 19 and then another three. Uh, we're at 21. Uh, and then if you have your uh, bending machine here, we have to go through another three, uh, which is going to equal up to 24. So that's 24 rockets uh, if you want to do this entire thing. So if you're going to do the same thing on the other side, that's another 24 rockets. So that's what, uh, 48 rockets. And then we're going to do the same thing for the floor above, right, which is another 48 rockets. So now that you're at 100 rockets, um, or uh, no, you're at, uh, what, 96 rockets. But then there's also going to be always one door that they're going to have to get through. Uh, so you're looking at 100 rockets if you want to go through any of the walls. Now, another thing that they can do is they can go into uh, through the floors, right? They can go through these floors. Um, but again, I've got you covered as long as you have your third floor utility room here. It's still 16 rockets to get into that one. And then it's another... So it's 16 rockets to get into that one. And then it's going to be uh, three rockets to get through here. So we're at 19 rockets. And then look at that. It's another 16 rockets. So now we're at 25 rockets. Um, and then we're going to need another three here. So now we're at 28 rockets. And then downstairs, we're going to need another three. Uh, so we're at, uh, what is it? Uh, 23 rockets. Uh, so we're at 26. And then 29 to get to the vending machine, 31. Uh, so it's, uh, what, like 60... 60 or... It's like 70... It's about 70 rockets. Um, if they go through the exact floors uh, the way that they're supposed to. Um, and then, but that also, in order to get to this tile, they have to go through here or here. Um, so that gives you your 75 rockets um, all the way through the top, no matter, no matter which way they go. Um, so, yeah, so there's your 75 rockets. Um, and again, every one of these things is uh, five. So we've got uh, three... 6, 9, 12, 15. So this door path is 15 rockets, which is one less than our 16 out there. But if they're going through the door path, then they have to go through at least one more door up there uh, in order to do that, meaning our door path is actually too stronger than if they were to come through here. So it doesn't matter how they raid into this base, uh, even if they came through here, right? Because um, I think these are like a thousand or something like that. So these are even more than, uh, so these are about the equivalent uh, to a, a wall here. So they can come through here, then this door, then this door. Um, that's actually more than if they were come through the door. So the doorway uh, system is um, the cheapest way to get through here, but it's also <laughs> 
the exact same as if you were to go through the walls and then go through all of these doors uh, into here. And that's not including anything up in the, u u the utility room at all. So guaranteed, 75 rockets, doesn't matter how they, how they look at it. Uh, two days can be put into this thing. Uh, you have a ton of space for bags. You have extra resources to help you when you're uh, spawning in to help you guys get back into the fight really quickly. You have lots of room for extra lockers, four entrances and exits, plus a roof at entrance and exit, and uh, um, the ability to add china walls, all of that fun stuff. And if you really, 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 really wanted to, um, because you don't want to build the china walls, you don't want to have to worry about uh, climbing, uh, you know, a set of stairs to get into the base and then down into your core every time, uh, what you could do is you could take this third floor and make this third floor the first floor and then move the first floor up to this floor. Um, and like build the, the first floor exactly the same, but up on the, up on the third floor and then use this as your first floor. So these are all ground level. You come in here ground level, and then you have to go up in order to get at, uh, to access the rest of the base. And then you can make it as tall as you want. So you can have four floors in a row um, in order to uh, get up to the, and then you can have your uh, fifth floor, or your sixth floor, sorry, as your sh uh, shooting floor. And, because remember, these things can only be, um, uh, elevators in these stairs can only go six floors. So by the time you have your first floor utility room, four floors of storage, um, you're at five floors, that sixth floor is going to be your shooting floor uh, or, and the top elevator floor. Um, but yeah, I like to do it the opposite way. I like to have two floors down there, two floors up there, um, because I do like adding my china walls. So my china walls give these lower floors extra protection that those upper floors wouldn't get. Um, but again, if you copy this whole setup, these two floors, and you put it up there, um, well then, again, you're adding another uh, 75 rockets. So this whole base, this whole tower, then becomes 150 rockets to raid, um, and only the most extreme groups are going to be able to, uh, to do that to you. So this is uh, the base tour. This is the Dragon's Den. There is a way to make this a little bit stronger um, and to upgrade it just a little bit more um, to make the door paths just a little bit stronger, um, but it won't really make the outside stronger. So um, you could actually make this into a 100 rocket door uh, raid and 100 rockets for the outer walls. Um, but this is the version I like to use the most because it provides you uh, the best maneuverability around the base. Um, while also looking, you know, the least intimidating of all the bases. Like, you wouldn't think about, you know, I'm what, one, two, three, four foundations wide um, by one, two, three, four. So in a four by four little cube, right, this is a, a 75 rocket raid. Um, and for the, again, for the price and for the cost of, of raiding it, um, I wouldn't be upset if somebody came in and raided this uh, because it's only going to take me an afternoon or two to, to rebuild it. Especially if they don't destroy all of the doors. Uh, I can go in and reuse some of those uh, the old doors that they didn't use or break uh, in the new base and get set up in another day. So um, I hope this helps. I hope this uh, that you guys really like this video. If you want the full tutorial on how to build it, um, I do have that on... Um, my full build guide um, playlist um, so you can get a step-by-step -step on how to build this and yeah so never get rated again and if you do well you know uh, lose less than they do uh, that's my motto <laughs> all right guys thanks for watching have a good one and uh, enjoy living in the dragon's den